Good morning. Good morning. Saturday. Saturday. And this is a very special day. Also, this is the day that we have a prayer breakfast starting just right away, especially uh, going concurrently because uh, we start at 6 30 and we want to thank God for the grace of God. Even as we have a prayer breakfast to usher in the month of November, that in God's presence we may be able to command this month in accordance with the will and the, and the grace of God, that we may be able to find a month that is dedicated, a month that is consecrated, a month that it will be able to be a month that uh, we're going to experience not only God's blessings, but God's instructions, God's reading, God's care, God's protection, and also a man that we're going to fulfill the, press, the, the will of God about this season and about our life. Not our will, but also that the will of God may be done. Why we come to start this month in God's presence is also we may be able to subdue ourselves. You know, one of the things that we need to learn by God's grace is like we don't command God to do what we want him to do. We allow God to help us to align ourselves. We align ourselves into God's plans, into God's will, because his will is good. He's perfect. He's always thinking well about us to have a future that is full of, of good life, prosperity, peace, grace, and especially that we may be able to be obedient so that we can enjoy the good of the land. And for that reason, why we come to dedicate the month and submit ourselves is that we come, consecrate the month, set it apart for God, that we may be able to align ourselves, align ourselves with the will and the plan of God about our lives. And when we do that, we are sure that at least God will order our steps in times of joy, in times of difficulties, in times of fear, in times of great victories, that we are not going to depart from the plan and the will of God. Number two, why we also come together at the beginning of the month is to acknowledge the name of the Lord among us. You remember Alan was told for the children of Israel to find a blessing to go through the desert, that he was to proclaim and call the name of God. In other words, declare the name of God among the Israelites and they will be blessed. We come here also, even in the presence of God as we start the month, to decree and declare the name of Jesus and the name of God among us and declare a blessing that God's people may be able to enjoy God's blessings and God's grace. And finally, we also come together at the beginning of the month, even as we bring praise and worship to God. After a whole month has been done, we come to give thanks and honor to God. It is also a service of thanksgiving. We come and are able to enumerate the good things, the masses we have received as families, as people, as a church, as a nation. And we are able to be deliberate in God's presence to say we are grateful because God always honors a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Brethren, we thank God that the Lord is giving us by his grace a new month. And this is the new month that the Lord has given unto us. Now allow me by God's grace that I may be able also to take the opportunity that to remind us that by God's grace we'll be able to find a blessed month. The month of November will be a month of thanksgiving. Will be a month of thanksgiving. And we are going to start that uh, in the month of November by also being able to get deep to understanding how we can be able to honor God with our giving. Because now how do we give thanks? We give thanks when we give our, our gifts, our talents, and more so. This time specifically we want to talk about sacrifices how we give our sacrifices, how we give our offerings, how we give our thanksgiving, how we give our uh, commitment sacrifices and every manner of gifts that we give to the service of the kingdom and especially to the church that we may be able to learn so that when we give, we may not give a miss. We also not just give, but we give gifts that will also be effective and gifts that will cause us a blessing. Sometimes we feel that people give so much but get very little. And not because we are not giving, but we are not giving right. And also, we are not giving what we are supposed to give. And therefore, we are seeking that the grace of God and the spirit of grace of liberality will come over as we teach so that we may be able to understand what God requires of us. But even as we do that, 
First things first. Let us be able to bring and to an end the issues we have been learning about the family altar. And by the way, it's good to say that we're going to have on, a, on, a, on, a, on, a, on the, on the 12th of November, that will be the second Sunday of the month of November, we'll be able to gather all of us as families to come to church as we come together in this altar that God has raised on our behalf as our families, that we also come together with our families and be able to dedicate ourselves and give sacrifice of thanksgiving at this altar raised to us, even as we seek that the Lord may renew and rekindle the fire of our family altars, that the Lord may be able to build the broken walls and the issues that are broken in our family altars, that God will also bring down any manner of wicked and long altars that the devil had tried to raise in our families. It will be a day of God's healing our altars and restoring our altars as we give sacrifice of thanksgiving before him. Because you remember what we have learned, he says, that that which honors him is when we give thanks to him, appreciate what he has done, but also we are able to honor and even be able to uh, keep our vows and honor of our vows. There are many things we have asked God in, as families. And we asked him, do this, we'll be grateful. If you do this, we'll thank you. Now that is the day to come, to be able to pay in our vows before God, and especially to give thanks as God comes to restore and heal our family altars. Now, the last important thing, the firewood that I want to talk about this Saturday, is the firewood of true worship to God. True worship to God. Now, I think I need to temper it and be able to explain something that I would want us to get it. That we have talked about so much about the fire of the altar. And I've been able to explain even how the fire of the altar have been experienced and seen in the Old Testament. From the burning bush to the pillar of fire that led the children of Israel in the desert to the fire that was lit in the tabernacle in the desert and even to the fire that was a bit of a stint when the temple was built and was consecrated. And we also agreed together that this fire is the fire that signifies and represents the presence of God. I think we are in agreement up to that time and that point that though that fire was a significance of God's presence. That's why God commanded that that fire must not be put off. We should not allow the fire to be put off. But also in the New Testament, we realize that when Jesus came as an example by excellent and become an offering that is enough that we don't need to sacrifice bulls and other animals, that the sacrifice of Christ is enough. And he died on the cross for us, for our deliverance, for our salvation, for our blessing, for the breaking of our curses and all this stuff. Something else we realize that when he's taken over, he says he's not going to leave us alone as orphans. Therefore, he will leave the Holy Spirit. Now, when the Holy Spirit is coming on the day of Pentecost, he come as in the signs of tongues of fire. Tongues of fire. Also in the New Testament, reminding us that the fire of God coming down to the church was the significance of God indwelling in the lives of men. Holy Spirit, God indwelling, the presence of God indwelling in the lives of the church and the Christians. Now, having said that, it is important also to say this. This last important word that we need to remember, which I'm calling true worship to God, it is important to learn this. This fire was not a human it never sourced and emanated and started from men. Let me say this. The burning bush, the fire was not lit by any man. It is God who brought that fire. And that's why the bush was burning but was not consumed. Now, the pillar of fire at the desert at night, it was not a human making. It's God who was bringing for that fire. Can I also remind you? that even when the tabernacle was done, do you remember where the fire came from? When the altar and everything was done, the Bible says that fire came from heaven, came down. So that fire that came is what was supposed to be sustained, but it was not human fire. 
it was not that alone was going there to kuchonga chonga vitu ndio awashe moto kama vile tunawasha moto ya kuni ama moto ya, ya jiko no it is after everything was prepared that fire came but when it came at the altar it was now the work of the priest to sustain and make sure that that fire doesn't go out can i remind you now when the tabernacle has been done and a new temple has been done in jerusalem You remember when Solomon is standing to pray in the book of Chronicles and lays his hands and so much sacrifice have been laid at the altar and they are praying where did the fire come from the bible tells us that the glory of god came down and filled the temple and the fire came from heaven and consumed the offerings because the fire is the presence of god is not the human making now i want to say this as a sum up and very very important God's presence it is not human manipulation. It is important to know it is God himself who comes to be with us. And how do we allow God to come to be with us? It is when we recognize that our praise of worship and our altar are supposed to be a praise of true worship to God to God. In other words, our focus of worship in the family altar must be Jesus Christ must be God the Father Son and the Holy Spirit that's why i'm so opposed of any other sacrifice that people try to do that when there is this that people can be able to do that kind of an animal that they can go at kwa sababu kuna mtu amekufa atijui kuna ndume itachinjwa atisifuatwe na na roho ya kifo atisijui kwa sababu mtoto anafanya exam apeleke kuku ichinjwe atisijui kwa sababu ndio asilaaniwe asiwekwe ati asiongewe vibaya atisijui mtoto wakati amezaliwa aende akanyolewe na mama na, na shosho yake sijui akinyolewa sijui kufanywa nini ndio asipatwe Let me say those are difficult and very very complicated issues when we get ourselves into because what we do we are lazing other altars and our worship now is not to our true one and holy god god the father son and the holy spirit but we find ourselves now introducing other gods and altars and altars in our families and therefore for us to make sure that the fire of christ and the fire of god's presence and the fire of our family altars is a brace at all times it's always to remember that we must give true worship remember jesus saying to the samaritan woman a time is coming and it is now when true worshipers will worship me in truth and in spirit i want to ask us by god's grace as we come to a cross that we remember by god's grace that we need to give true worship to god when we meet We must make sure that our focus is not on our individuals. It's not about me as the head of the family. It's not about anyone. It's not about who is gifted. It's not about who is doing this. Our focus is supposed to be on God. And because it's God that we are focusing, we must be willing to live a holy life. God is not worshiped with wickedness. And therefore, true worship is about living a worship a, a, a life that is worthy because he says you must keep pick your body as a living sacrifice that is worthy and acceptable to God giving ourselves in holiness when we meet and we are living a straight and a pure life before God and we give worship to God which I am calling true worship then God's presence will never depart from us do not forget david crying in the book of psalms 51 and is crying to God and telling him Do not take away your spirit from me. Do not allow your presence to depart from me. Because he knew that sin sin will cause God's presence to depart from his people. May the Lord grant us the grace to practice true worship in the praise of our family altars. And true worship can be only given when we live a life of purity, a life of holiness, a life of righteousness and our focus for worship must be only in our god god the father son and the holy spirit may the lord bless you may the lord keep you may the lord continue to grant you the favor remember brethren we have said that we need to bring together these different type of firewoods at our fire or the altar our family altar will remain a brace and remember it keeps god's presence within and among us that we may be able to find God's grace and we said remember do not forget to practice sincere love 
among the members of the family. Number two, remember to put the firewood of our formation that you affirm so people may feel that they belong. That unity of the family, everybody feels he belongs. Even when you come together, they feel that they belong. Even appreciation, which we called that we need also to make sure that we are, are able to appreciate and thank God, the spirit of gratitude, to appreciate what is done, that everybody feels he's not tired of whatever he is doing because he feels he is appreciated. Because even God loves the sacrifice of thanksgiving, that we are able to thank one another in our various parts of life, that we are grateful to have whoever we have in life. And number four, forgiveness and reconciliation, that we are willing to forgive each other their faults, that we are not counting and keeping a locket of longs, that we are willing to forgive so that our sins also may be forgiven. But also the, uh, the, the firewood number five, that we must always be committed to serving one another, serving the small and the big, the strong and the weak, so that because service to people will always keep them feeling honored and respected and therefore it brings harmony. And finally, true worship, that we are supposed to always step and live together in purity, in holiness, in giving true worship to God and not falling to worship of other gods that will remain our focus on worship because God's presence is enough for us. It will break our curses. It will guard us from any manner of evil. It will protect us from any manner of attack. It will provide to all our needs. When God's presence goes with us, he will make a way where there seems to be no ways. He will bring down walls that are fortified. And in God's presence, there is fullness of joy. And our lives will find favor, grace, and joy. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord do you good. And remember this. Keep the fire of your family altar burning. Do not let it go out. Continuously bring together the woods, bring together the firewood, that the fire of your family altar will remain a brace, that the presence of God will be assured in our families, in our church, and in whatever thing we do, we're going to prosper. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.